Good morning, November 13th. Counting our days. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23, verse 6. It is hard to conceive, but there are only 48 days left in this calendar year. Where did another year go? As we progress toward the end of the year and the beginning of another, it is important that we evaluate how our time is being spent. Our days on this earth are finite. Innately, we know that. But do we really think about what that means? There are 168 hours in a week. And if you sleep 8 hours a night, 56 hours of your week's allotment are already gone. When you add getting ready for work, commuting to work, being at work and eating, the hours quickly dwindle away. You must have time for your friends and family. But what about time for God? How can you be sure to make enough time for the Lord of the universe? I believe the answer can be found by walking with Christ throughout every moment of your life. In all of your activities, great or small, he should be your ever-present guest. Invite the King of Glory to share the days allotted to you now and look forward to enjoying his presence throughout eternity. Outside of Christ, I am empty. In Christ, I am full. Watchman Nay. So this is a pretty precious devotional for me because a few years ago, I actually asked the Lord what, and there was a certain psalm where he asked the Lord to teach him to number his days. And I prayed the same prayer over and over again when I was born again, because I knew that time is short, life is short, and I didn't want to waste moments, waste them in darkness and sin and anxiety and depression. So I asked him to teach me to number my days, and I bought a planner, I started a you know, taking my schedule into my own hands, I, I started actually writing in my calendars like I did back in school when we had to. But I started doing that again. I was about uh, either the end of my 20s or just turned 30 or something like that. Sure enough, I, I nearly fainted in church. Uh, I started getting chest pains and uh, thankfully there were several nurses. It was a Japanese church called Cornerstone over in Glenview, Illinois. And the nurses uh, immediately knew that I was having heart attack-like symptoms. So uh, they took me to an urgent care, but they didn't have the instruments to look at my heart. So then they took me to emergency room. And in the emergency room, I found out that yes, indeed, I have heart disease. Not only that, it's congenital, meaning I was born with this form of heart disease. And so long story short, God answered my prayer. Because after that day and since that day, I have numbered my days. My heart is a ticking time bomb, as, as is all of ours, whether they are perfectly healthy or filled with disease like my own. Make every day count. Make sure you tell the people around you that you love them, those who disrespect you, curse you, walk away from them and pray for them. You do not need to have toxicity in your life. It is a waste of your time. Unless, of course, the Lord tells you to hang around. But he does not require you to be the object or the subject of narcissistic abuse. Even the Lord himself said, be kind to your enemies, pray for your enemies, pray for those who abuse you. Now, prayer is a very personal thing. That means, <laughs> in my opinion, that you don't have to be around those kinds of people. So anyway, give your time to God. Maximize each day with productivity for his glory. And God bless you on this journey. I pray for you that God would fill you with the knowledge of him and that the Holy Spirit would lead you closer to be more like Jesus. I pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen.
Good evening. Renew your personality. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone. The new has come. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Few people take the trouble to develop a pleasant personality. They may put on a fake smile and keep up a pleasant front for a special occasion, but soon return to their old self. Many people believe that personality cannot change, but this is not true. If it were, the sacrificial love of Christ would have been in vain. History shows us that sinners can become saints and that unlovable people can become pleasant when the love of Christ enters their hearts. When you open yourself to the spirit of the living Christ, your personality is transfigured and your lifestyle transformed. Your calling as a Christian is not merely to be a good person. Although that is what you will become, your first priority is to commit yourself completely to your Lord, and then your personality will be renewed. This will not happen through your own strength, abilities, and ingenuity, no matter how hard you try. When Christ gives you his power, the impossible becomes possible. Our personality yields to Christ's influence, and we grow into the likeness of our heavenly example.